Oke, okay, good morning class. Good morning class. Good morning, sir. Alright, so this point in our lives we had homework. The homework was exercise 2.5. You had to do the second column, correct? Alright. Any issues with 2.5 in the second column? It was 2.6, 2.5 the second column. Any problems with number one? No? Number two? Number three? You mustn't be looking at the, the answers, uh, the, the sum. You'll be looking in your book. You do the work, Michael. Okay, you did it, sorry. You marked it already. Okay, good. So no problems here. Then we went on to simplifying exponential expressions using factorization or factorizing. We did those examples and we did the exercise 2.8, the first column on page 50. Any problems in number one? No problems. You guys did the homework. Number two? 2C, two 2I, two and I is in the first column. Oh, I is here, sorry. So it's 2C. Just hang on. This is the exercise. 2.6, page 50. Number two. Oh my word. The first goal was C. G. I. Sorry? K. Anything else? Sorry? No. Okay. So, what do we do first? We must break. Pause up. So it can be written as 2ax plus ax times a to the 1 over ax times a to the 1 minus ax. What is now common? a to the x. What are we left with? 2 plus a over ax a minus so a to the x can cancel, not so. so the answer is 2 plus a over a minus 2. That's an o, it's an a minus. Right, where do you go wrong? a plus 2, 2 plus a is the same. But the better way to write it is 2 plus a, because if there's going to come a negative, then it had to be 2 minus a, if 2 is first. Okay, anything else? Who else had a uh, problem with the sum? Nobody? It's important to indicate what the issues are. Okay. So, um, we can tell you why you're not right. Okay. 
It's important. That's why it's also important to do the homework. But by the by the results of the previous exam, it doesn't look like you guys are doing that. This is what it looks like. Hmm? Okay, so we're looking at G. G what can I, we must break up the powers here so that one gets broken that one there and this one not so so it's going to give you 3 to the n times 3 to the 4 minus 6 times 3 to the n times 3 to the 1 over 3 to the n times 3 squared times 7 what is common to the n is common. Okay? We say 3 to the n. We only can take out common factors if there's a plus or minus. No? So here we're going to have 3 to the 4 minus 6 times 3 all over 3 to the n times 3 squared times 7. So what can happen now? 3 to the n cancel, not so. So 3 to the 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 81. 6 times 3 is 18. Over 3 squared, which is 9 times 7. 18, uh, 81 minus 18 is 63. <coughs> no? And 9 times 7 is also 63. Just giving you an answer. Of. Okay. What was the confusion here? What's this question? The second line. So what did you write? In the denominator. Okay, so you, 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 your mistake is here or here? Second, yeah. So what did you write? Well, you didn't know what to do. But now you know. Anybody else? Yes, Michael? Sorry? Are you copied it, okay? <laughs> so she says make the same mistake. Okay, no problem. But you know now what to do. Okay? We're looking at 2i. Again, we're going to break up these powers here. So it will be 5 times 2 to the x minus 4 times 2 to the x times 2 to the negative 2. And that's all over 2 to the x minus 2 to the x times 2 to the negative 1. Not so. Now what? 2 to the x is common. What are we left with? 5 minus 4 times 2 to the negative 2 over 2 to the x is a common factor. And I'm left with 1 minus 2 to the negative. Yes? Uh, the How uh, do you mean negative one? Yeah, are you talking about this point here? Yeah. Okay, so what do you say it must be? Two to the x into? Negative one. Just negative one. No. Where must you get negative one? In front here. Yeah. You say they must come in negative here. Yeah. Why? The denominator? Okay, just the same. One person at a time. So you say you must come a negative here. Okay? But yes, there no negative thing? No. 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 Are you saying you must come? Okay, just a second. You say you must come a negative one thing. Is that what you say? No. 
Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Terus terus yang lain. Kamu tuh buat ini sih. Yes. Well, what is common? Two to the power x. Okay. So you say you must have a negative here because that is negative. The reason why that isn't like, why there isn't a negative thing is, say, say 2x was a y. Just say for argument, say 2x is a y. Right. You know what I mean? Y minus, y minus, I said, y times y, y minus y times 2 to the negative 1. Not so. Let's put 2 to the negative 1 is also what? Oh, not so. So what is common here? Are they all like things that could have subtracted? But what is common here? Wow. But take y out, what am I left with? Y 1 y minus oh. You agree with that? You agree, Michael? Why not? Because remember, products is the reverse of factorization. So if I multiply this out again, what is y times 1? Y. y. Is this y positive or negative? Positive. Now y times 1 is y. Is that positive or negative? Positive. What is y times negative of? Negative of half times y. Or negative of half y. You understand? That is why this can't be a negative. Because if you multiply 2x times 1, what am I going to get? 2x. If I put a negative here, then it would have been 2x times negative 1. It would have been negative 2, which is not the case. You understand? Okay. Alright, now what? 2 to the x cancel. Not so. So now, you got 5 minus. 2 to the negative 2 is what? Quarter. So it's 1 over 2 squared. Not so. So negative exponent. Remember x to the negative 1 can be written as 1 over x. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2. Uh, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. You all agree with that? Right. So that's going to give you? 1 over 4 over 2 to the negative 1, 1 over 2. Okay, now what? Quarter times 4 is 1, not so. So I'm going to get 5 minus 1. What is 1 minus half? Half. What is 5 minus 1? 4. So it's 4 divided by what? Four divided by half. Not so. Which is the same as four multiplied by two over one. And four multiplied by two is? Who we'll asked this question? Where did you go wrong, Michael? So four times a quarter. So this this problem here. Okay. Anybody else? You put that negative there, no? Okay, but you sorted. Anybody else? You're all okay with it. With it okay. The last one, K. So, 4 can be written as 2 squared. 8 can be written as 2 cubed. That's where I'm going to start. 2 squared raised to the y times 2y times 2 to the 2y. Breaking this up as well. There's power 1 breaking up. Minus 8 can be written as 2 cubed raised to the y over anything to power 0 is 1. 2 squared times 2 to the 3y. You will agree with that? 
Now what we do? Multiply the exponents. So it's 2 to the 2y times 2 to the y times 2 squared minus 2 to the 3y over 2 squared times 2 to the 3y. What do we see now? This together makes what? 2 to the? Not so. When you multiply basically the same way, why did I make it 2 to the 3y? Because I can see the it would have been a common factor. You understand? So let's put that together first. These two I'm bringing together. It's going to be okay. So it's going to be two to the three y times two squared minus two to the three y over two squared times two to the three y. So what's now common? 2 to the 3 1. What are we left with? 2 squared minus 1 over 2 squared times 2 to the 3 1. So what can happen now? Cancel 2 to the 3 1. I know some of you can do it in much less steps than this. Okay? And I can also do it in much less steps. But I do all the steps so anybody can follow. Okay? The weaker learner can follow and the stronger learner. Okay, so 2 squared is 4. So it's 4 minus 1 over 2 squared. 4. And 4 <coughs> minus 1 is 3. So it's 3 over. What was the mistake here? What was this question? Yes? Yeah. Are you talking about this? Yes. Okay. You said 2 times 2. So you would have had 2y times 2y. Two, 2 to the y, sorry, times 2 to the y. Would it have been the same? So that, that can't be a mistake. She said she wrote for 4, 2 times 2. The raised to the y times 2y times 2 squared minus 2 cubed y over, that cancels, 2 squared times 2 to the 3 y. That's what you got, no? Is that what you have, Michael? Yes. yes. So you have 2 y, 2 to the y times 2 to the y times 2 to the y times 2 squared minus 2 to the 3 y over 2 squared times 2 to the 3 y. Is that what you have? Yes? Yeah. Sorry? I mean 2y because I didn't put the y here. On the you didn't put the y there. Yeah, that's your mistake. That is not the mistake. You understand? You see there's many ways of doing a uh, problem. There's many ways of uh, solving a sum. That you could have gone down there. Yeah, as long as you didn't... If you had written 2 to the y here, time, if you had written that one y there, then I'm sure you would have gotten the answer. Okay. So the pro the mistake is in the second step. Okay, anybody else? Oh good. Okay. For homework, I want you guys to do two point six. Number two, the second column. Don't worry about number one because there was no problems in number one. Okay? So you gotta do exercise two point six. The second column, number two, on page 50. Okay. The next heading, exponential equations. Exponential equations. It's on page 51.
Okay. So you're heading these exponential equations, you're on page 51. So we are told that an exponential equation has a variables in the exponents. Now what are variables? Variables are A, B's, X, Y's and those things. The unknown values, in other words, are known as variables. So when the variable is in the exponent, okay, and it's an equation, it then becomes a, or an exponential equation. So what were, what were we dealing with thus far? If, the, if, if these are exponential equations here, then what have we dealt with before? Expression, exponential expression. Okay? So they have an equal sign there and it's equal to, then becomes an, a, uh, either an identity or in this case, a, um, an equation. The general formula of an exponential equation is a to the x equals b, where a is not equal to 1. Why do we call that where we say a is not equal to something? A restriction. Didn't we talk about restrictions yet? No. Okay. A restriction is basically a value that the variable cannot be equal to. For argument's sake, if I have 1 over x plus 6 equals 0, or equals some number for arguments, what is the one value, and we have an x plus x here, what do you want? What's the one value that x can never be equal to? Zero. x can be zero. We put one over zero here. Zero plus six. One over six. So x can be zero. It cannot be equal to negative six. Why can it not be equal to negative six? Huh? Why is it cannot be equal to negative 6? Otherwise, the denominator will be equal to 0, yeah? And the sum will result in an undefined solution. Not so. So that is where we say x cannot be equal to negative 6. That is called a restriction. Okay. So here they say that x cannot be equal to 1. Oh, sorry, a cannot be equal to 1. That's one restriction. Then further on the restriction says that a has to be greater than zero. That's also a restriction. So, by, by saying this, they're eliminating certain numbers from our number system. Does it make sense? So, can, can a be negative? No. a has to be positive. Whenever you see a greater than zero sign, it means to say it must be positive. Alright. So, if you look at the number line, there's zero. If this was number line representing A, then that means to say that A has to be more than zero in that direction. Not so. And A cannot be equal to one. So there's a, a, a open circle there. A can't be equal to one as well. Can you see that people? So A must be greater than zero and a can't be equal to 1. You guys understand? I think last year we did number lines, no? but we're going to look at another another video where we can do a whole lot of number lines and domain and range and that questions, okay? So that's normally questions that, that learners have problems with. Okay? If a to the exponent x is equal to a to the exponent y, if a to the exponent x is equal to a to the exponent y, then we can, where a is greater than 0 and a is not equal to 1, then y is equal to x. For argument, another example for that is, if you got 2, a is now 2, 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the y. What can we conclude now? Therefore, x is equal to y. When bases are the same, Exponents are equal. Can you see that, people? When bases are the same, the exponents are are equal. Then. Okay. To solve exponential equation, we use the law of exponents to express each side 
as a single power of a common base. So what you want to do is to get the bases the, the same. That's the idea in exponential equations. Okay, we're always going to try and get the bases the same. And then the, and we equate the exponents. Equate the exponents means to say, you set the exponents equal to each other. Okay, you guys understand? Right. So now we're looking at, if you want, for those of you who like writing, and you want to make your, your, your maths book uh, an English or history book, you can write all the stuff down in your book, okay? But you understand what I tried to explain? It? Right. So let's look at example one on page 51. It says solve for x in 3x is equal to 4. And 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the 4. So, of, so the first thing is to check is the base is the same. Yes. Right. So right next to that, the first bullet is we try and get the bases the same. Once the bases are the same, the second bullet point, you equate the exponents or Second bullet, you can say if the uh, base is the same, the exponents are equal. So the first bullet is to get the base is the same. Second bullet point, equate the exponents. So we check in the example one. Are the bases the same? What is the base here? Three. Yes, three by six three are the same. Therefore, what can we conclude? X is equal to. You guys understand? Let's look at example two. Are these bases the same? No. So what must we do? Is get it the same. Not so. so we always tend to write it in products of its prime factors. So 2 to the x, the right hand side is sorted already. So it's the left hand side that's the issue. Not so? So how can 8 be written as a base of 2? 2 cubes. So do that and you solve the equation. Okay. Right. So we said 8 can be written as 2 cubed equals 2 to the x. Therefore, 3 is equal to x, so x is equal to? Any confusion here? No? Right? There's the next two. Example 4 and 5 on the same page. Looking at example 3 on page 51. Are the bases the same then? No. So you must try and get the bases the same. So what are we going to change here? 1 over 27. But 27 can be written as what? 3 cubed. Alright, so do that quickly. So 
we said it's going to be 3 to the x is equal to 1 over 3 cubed. Are the bases now the same? No. The one space is in the, in the numerator, which is 3 to the x over 1. And 3 cubed is in the denominator. Not so. So what do we do now? Bring the 3 cube up. Well, I could have taken that down, but it's easier to take the 3 cube up. Okay? So do that quickly. If we take that up, what does it become? 3 to the? Negative. Negative. Not so? Now what? If it's the same, exponents are equal, therefore x equal to? You will understand? Right? Do, do number example 4 quickly. I'll give you a minute to show that one out. Right, you guys finish? Right. So what are you going to do here? What are you going to break up? 16. So 2 to the x minus 1 is equal to? 2 to the exponent? 4. Now what can we do? Break up 4. To what? 2x times 2 to the minus 1 is equal to 2 to the 4. Is that what you got? And then? Should we divide both sides by 2 to the 1? Yes, absolutely. Nice. So 2 to the x is equal to? 2 to the 5. Nice. Therefore, x equal to 5. Good. That's one way from that point. Otherwise, what can we do? Simple. So therefore, x minus 1 is equal to? 4. x equal to? Okay. But you guys understand? In the confusion, who got this wrong? Let's look at the last example on page. Yes? Yo, I thought you were going to ask me something in maths. What's wrong with you? Alright. Example 4. Okay. 
So on book five. Page 51. So what's going to happen here? Many things. What can be broken up here? 27 and 9. So do that quickly. Okay? So you guys have said, I'm going to break up 27, which can be written as 3 cubed. Raise to the x times 3 squared. x minus 2 is equal to 3. Now what? We multiply, not so. So what do we get? 3 to the times 3 to the 2x minus 4 equals 3. You all got that? Yeah. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't get that. What did you get? You wrote 3 to the 2x minus 2. Yes, there's a common made error. The learner doesn't multiply the 2 throughout it. Did you write the step in here or did you go straight into this? Yes. You first wrote this? Yeah. Now, you will see that I always write this first step. Many people say it's unnecessary. But this is a foolproof method. Any fool can do it. No? Don't say you guys are fools. Don't say anybody can do it. So, by going from this straight into this, uh, that is the main concern. The learner always forget to multiply the two by the negative. Okay? So, start uh, doing that step. Okay? I know there's no marks involved. You, you, you must only work if you get marks, must no? You only do things as well, something. Not so. You guys do nothing for nothing. Right? Yes, I know. You guys are like it. No? But that is the safety mechanism. Okay? And to ensure that you don't make any mistakes. People, what do we do when we multiply? Add the exponents. Okay? So that will be simply 3 to the 3x. Plus 2x minus 4. Uh, minus 4 is equal to 3 to the exponent. Okay. This is the basic law of exponents that we are applying. Now what can we say? It's 3 to the... 5x minus 4 is equal to 3 to the 1. Now what do we do? Are we going to break it up again, Jordan? No, man. Is the basis not already the same? Yes. So the exponents we can say equal to each other. Not so? So we can say the A4. In conclusion, 5 to the x minus 4 is equal to 1. So now it becomes a linear equation. We take negative 4 over, it becomes 5 to the x is equal to 5. Divided by 5 both sides, x is equal to. You guys understand? Any confusion? Yes, my God. Over. How do you I did take the negative 4 over? From this step here. Up. This one. Okay? I said 
You do that for over onto that one. Dangerous, I think. Dangerous. Uh, ra rather, first drop the basis and then you solve the experiments. Because later on, when the sum becomes a bit more complex, namely in grade 11, then that is going to throw you out. So rather from, from the beginning, apply the rules I tell you so it can be applied in grade 11 and 12 as well. You remember when we did factorization in grade 9 with all that rules? But you could have seen it after a while already and you stopped doing the rules, not so? And when you came to grade 10, you had to read learn that the rules. Not, must be now I know? Because of the exam. The people can't factorize a trilogue which we did a lot and we revised the rules in grade 9 over and over again. And it's still in grade 10 you can't it. Why? So you don't listen when I talk. You see? But for now, it's fine. Don't do that. Although you got the sum right. Mark it right, it's fine for now. But in future, just watch out. Okay. First make the bases the same for the exponents to be equal. Okay. Oh, I thought it was the last example. Right, now in an example on page. Yeah, a lot of examples left. Must move a bit faster, no? Otherwise, we're not going to get all the examples in. Now we're looking at example 5, 6 on page 52. Example 6 on page 52. Example 6 on page 52. Do that one quickly. Calculate it and give me your answer you want. <laughs> right. Guys are ready? Pretty simple. 81 can be written as 3 to the 4 equals 3 to the x. What do we do now? Bring that up. So 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the negative 4. Therefore, x is equal to who got that one right? Where did you go wrong, Michael? Sorry? You got it right. So why didn't you put up your hand? Listen, if you don't put up your hand, I'm going to ask you, because I would like to know where you went wrong. Okay, you had to talk to me a little. Yes. 
Have you done it right this year? You don't want to write it down? Is this say in conclusion? Do you think I'm going to lose a mark if you put there? Not there. No. Right, here's the next one. What are we going to do in example 7 on page 52? Break out the 27. The 27 can be written as what? 3 to the exponent? 3 equals 3 to the x. You all agree with that? We're moving too fast now. Okay. Now what can be done? You can convert this radical form to exponential form. We're going to use that rule that says the nth root of a to the m can be written as a to the m over n. So what is the n value here in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, square root 2? So that's going to be 3 times 3 to the exponent 3 over 2 is equal to 3 to the exponent yes, yes? sorry you see here this is a 2 here so I'm writing it from third form to radical form and third form and radical and third is the same to, to exp exponential form so the m over the root and the root always go in the denominator. That's why it's a two here. It's the root. Not so. The first root of anything is the same thing. It's one. Whatever it is. Okay. So they start by two. Now what do we do? When we're multiplying it, bases are the same. We add the exponents. What's the exponent on this three? One. So it's going to be one. So let's multiply. 3, so we're going to add 1 plus 3 over 2. What's 1 plus 3 over 2? 5 over 2. Or 2 and a half. Not so. So in conclusion, we can say therefore, x is equal to? Okay, you guys got it? Don't lose it, okay. Is the next one? Come before the bell rings. Give you a chance with the with the first one. The second one I will do immediately thereafter. Yes? Eight and nine. So that's not six and seven. Oh, eight and nine. Thank you. It's good you guys can see my mistakes. No? But you always tell me we are making a mistake. Okay. Right, by the sounds of it, you guys are finished with, uh, with number 8? No? Yes? No, sir. No. When you finish with number 8, you go to number 9. You can start number 9, so on.
All right. So let's look at example eight. Where do you start here? Sorry? Multiply the two and the five. Not so. Can we multiply the two and five? No. Why? Because of the exponent. Can't. So what do we do first? Sorry? Multiply the that in. Is that what you say? Okay, no problem. So it's five times two to the three x plus three equals five. Now what? Do you leave it in? And expect three marks of the sum. No. Anybody? How is five and two to the three x plus three bonded? Multiplication. So what must I do? Divide. I want to get rid of the five. So that cancels. So that's two to the three x plus three equals. Five or five is? So if you got now two to the three x plus three, how can we get these bases the same? How do we get this basis the same? If I must put a 2 here. How can I get the 2 from a 1? 2 to the exponent? 0 is. 2 to the power exponent 0 is 1. Not O, it's a 0. <laughs> so what can we conclude? Therefore, 3x plus 3 is equal to? 0. So 3x is equal to? Negative 3. X equal to? One. Negative one. You guys understand? The last one. Multiply that. I will get 2 to the 2x times 2 to the 3x equals 32. Can be written as? So you say 32 equals shift factorize. 2 to the 5. We're multiplying it based on the same. Add the exponents. So it's 2 to the 2x plus 3x equals 2 to the 5. So that's 5, 2 to the 5x is equal to 2 to the 5. What can I do now? The bases are the same, the exponents are equal. So therefore 5x is equal to 5. x is equal to 1. Right. For homework. You guys are going to do for me exercise? 2.7, the first column. The first column in number one and two. Number three we will leave for the next lesson. Okay? So it's exercise 2.7, page 53, first column. People enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning, class. You actually understand. You're supposed to understand all the time.